In this video, we consider the language L. That's the set of um, strings description of D, where D is a DFA, and the size of the language of D is less than positive infinity. Um, what we're actually saying here is that um, the size of the language of D is finite. Okay, it's not infinite. We're going to show that L is decidable. Okay, so as a reminder, um, okay. Description of D is an element of L, if and only if, the size of the language of D is finite. Okay, so this is what we're trying to um, show that we can, can, can construct a decider for. Um, we know that a DFA has a finite set of states, so the language of DFA is finite only if there are no loops on any path between the start and final state. Okay, so um, let's write this so that we can remember it. So um, a DFA, well, let's call it D because we are referring to this D here, has a finite number of states. So language of D is finite if and only if there are no loops on a path from Q0, the start state, to some Q in the set of final states. Okay, notice um, this is more than just having no loops. Okay, so this machine Okay, so this machine has a loop, um, and I could even make more loops if we wanted some more loops. Let's add some more loops, just for fun. Let's call this B. Let's save this on AB. Um, let me leave that one. So I'm making it, you know, more complicated just to show you. I think I've got a transition from every state. Looks like it. Okay. Um, so this machine actually has a couple loops now, right? It has the self loop, um, and then it has this um, from here to here state loop, right? Um, from X to Y, um, back and forth. So this machine has loops, um, but its language is finite because the only string in this language is A, a single A. Um, so it's not enough that the machine has no loops. It can have loops. It just can't have any loops on a path from Q0 to the, uh, a final state, any final state. Okay, so as soon as I add in, um, if I were to add in, say, this guy, and then, you know, we've got some other C's elsewhere. You know, you can pretend I've got them. I've got all the right number of transitions. Um, this machine now has an infinite language. It accepts um, A concatenated with what? C A star. Right? Yep. Okay, so this has an infinite language. So this is what we're looking for. Um, we're looking for any loops on a path from the start state to any final state. Okay, so um, we want to be able to construct a decider that says um, basically find all of the loops, check if any of them is, is uh, reachable from Q0 and then can reach uh, Q in F, so a final state. If this happens, we reject. 
If this never happens, so we find all of our loops, we check them all for this condition from, from start to final. Um, and if none of them are have this condition, then we can accept. Okay, or if there are no loops, right? That's, that's trivially true, that if there are no loops, then none of them is reachable from the start state and none of them can reach a final state, and so we accept. So then this really boils down to the question of how do we find loops? Well, um, a strongly connected component, so let's give a quick definition. So a strongly connected component is a maximal. So maximal um, just means we can't add anything more to it. It's as, as big as it's going to get. Um, is a maximal set of vertices so that for any two vertices, let's name them U and V in the set, there is a directed path from, so here we're using directed graphs, so there is a directed path from U to V and from V to U. Okay, so just as a quick example, let's make Um, so here, if I choose Q0, um, there's a directed path, so let's give, these, let's give these just some numbers so I can refer to them. Okay, um, Q0, it can go to, it can, or sorry, from 0 it can go to 1, but 1 can't go to 0. So 0 is not in my strongly connected component. Likewise, um, 5 can be reached from 3, so there's a path from 3 to 5, but there's no path from 5 to 3, so 5 can't be in my connected component. Um, now to check the rest of it, we would need to check pairwise. So just to start us off, um, from 1 to 2, there's a path, I go 1 to 2, and then from 2 to 1, there's a path, I go 2, 3, 4, 1. From 1 to 3, there's a path, 1, 2, 3, from 3 to 1, there's a path, uh, 3, 4, 1. From 1 to 4, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4. From, from 4 to 1, I go 4 to 1. Okay, so you could check this. Um, but this now is a strongly connected component. Okay, um, notice here it's a loop. Okay, so we're going to use this um, to detect loops. Okay, so this is our strongly connected component um, definition. Um, and what we want to note also is that there are several algorithms that use depth first search that can compute strongly connected components. So we're not going to pick one necessarily, but we could, um, if we were actually going to um, write this Turing machine decider, we would, we would pick one to use and then encode it for the Turing machine to use. Um, but we can compute all the strongly connected components in a finite number of time um, actually, I think most of the algorithms are linear, but um, that doesn't even matter. As long as it's, it's finite and it can be computed algorithmically, then we can use it in our Turing machine. Okay, so now let's build um, this decider. Let's call it, um, just because we're using description of DFAD, so that'll get confused. Let's, um, let C be the decider for L. And then we're going to construct C as follows. Okay, so what does C do? On, whoo, that is not correct spelling. I get excited. I start writing really fast, and then it's, it's no good. Okay. On input D, where D is a uh, DFA. 
step one, we're going to compute the strongly connected components of D. And here we would, um, if we were going to actually build this and not just writing a high level description, we would need to pick an algorithm, one of the al available algorithms, or write our own, um, that would compute the strongly connected components in finite time. But we know they exist, so we can use them. So if any, I'm going to abbreviate strongly connected component is reachable. from the start state, state and can reach, so there's a path from the strongly connected component to some final state we reject. I had this backwards in my notes, so I'm just checking. Otherwise, except. Okay. So, uh, step one, we're computing all the strongly connected components in a finite amount of time. Step two, we check each strongly connected component. We check to see, we check our transition function. Um, we start, um, we could even move backwards. We could. Um, check our transition function um, from, say, each state in the strongly connected component and move backwards and see if um, we could have gotten there from the start state. That's one way to do it. Um, and then if that's true, so it is reachable from the start state, then we would also check um, each one of our states in our strongly connected component um, to see if there's a transition from there that takes us through a path to any final state. Okay, and we do this for each strongly connected component um, unless one of them um, meets these conditions. So basically, once we find some strongly connected component that's reachable from the start state and can reach a final state, we're going to go ahead and reject. We don't need to check the rest of them. Okay, so if this ever happens, we reject. Why do we reject? Um, because again, a strongly connected component is a loop. And if I can reach a loop from the start state and then go on to the final state, then my language is infinite because I can take that loop um, an arbitrary number of times and um, so I can build up an infinite number of strings in my language by just say taking the loop one more time and then take the loop one more time and again and again. Um, if we get through all of our strongly connected components and none of them meet both of these conditions reachable from the start state and can reach a final state then um, there is no loop on a path from start to final and therefore, um, every string, uh, how do I say this? So the number of strings that are accepted by that machine is finite, okay? If the um, number of strings accepted by the machine or recognized by the machine is finite, then the language um, is finite, okay? And if the language is finite, where am I? There we go. If the language is finite, um, then its size is less than infinity, and then it belongs in the language L. Okay, so we accept all um, machine descriptions that have finite languages, and we reject all machine descriptions that have infinite languages. And notice here we're never going to, we're never going to run forever. Each one of these um, steps can be computed definitively um, with some answer right in a finite amount of time and our machine is either going to reject or accept and therefore it is a decider.